Hey, I'm Bob at I Like To Make Stuff. Today I'm gonna make a giant action figure. For a long time now, I've been building a fully 3D printed Shore Trooper costume. I've been doing this almost exclusively on my live stream on Twitch, and the people that watch over there have affectionately named him Dan. So we're gonna call him Dan in this video. With all the work that I've been putting into this thing, when it's finished, I don't wanna just stick it in a box or hang it on a normal mannequin. Instead, I wanna turn it into a big, posable action figure. Not too long ago, my friends Bill and Britt from Punished Props made a mannequin stand, and I'm gonna pull some ideas from that, but I want mine to be posable. In fact, I want it to be able to hold this rifle, both down here and up here. Now the problem with holding something like this is that it's heavy and it puts a lot of torque on the joints. So we've gotta make something that is posable, but also lockable. We've got an idea, let's go try it out. So what we're doing is laying out some tape next to my limbs so we can figure out how long the pipes need to be to make the mannequin. Now we've got a measurement for each one of these different pieces and for the arms and for the legs, we're gonna have to double those, cut two of each. So we're gonna go to the miter saw, cut the PVC down so we can get all these pieces and then we can lay them out and start to figure out the joints. We've got the top parts fit together and you can kind of see the structure of the shoulders and where the arm's gonna be. I wanted to talk a little bit about the unions that we're using for the joints. These are PVC unions to connect two pipes and you can unscrew them to actually pull the pipes apart. But in our case, we're gonna use that as a way to reposition a joint or an arm and then you can tighten that back down to hold it in that position. Right now, nothing's glued together so everything's kind of loose and floppy. But having these two right here on this arm allows us a pretty good range of motion. So we can move that whole arm that's gonna be holding the rifle to where we need it to be. This arm is just gonna have one of those joints on the top so we can raise and lower the arm like that. But also, depending on what we glue and what we don't glue, allows us to be able to rotate the shoulders over the hips um, and you have a bunch of different options. So we'll glue the parts that need to be glued in, we'll leave everything else loose. Another cool thing about these unions is that once you put some clothes on the mannequin, it's kind of hard to get in there and tighten wing nuts or thumb screws, but these you can actually grab through the clothing to loosen and tighten. So to have the gun in this position, we've already got this arm kind of figured out. Theoretically, we'll see if it holds the weight, but this arm needs to be a little bit different angle. It also doesn't need to hold the weight of this. It just needs to be able to move into position. So I'm gonna hold it here and Josh is gonna measure the angle of my arm so we can try to figure out what to do for the elbow. I went ahead and marked all the places that need to be glued together just to make sure that I didn't accidentally glue something shut. And while we were doing that, we realized that if you put these unions the correct direction, the same direction, you could actually unscrew them and swap the arms. That gives you the option to be able to take apart the lower or the upper arms and swap them for different configurations. So as long as those are flexible, everything else can be glued up. And to do that, I'm gonna use some PVC cement. This stuff is self-priming, so you don't have to worry about two steps. You can do it all in one. Got some 3D printers running in the background making the knee joints, and while those are printing, I wanted to see how well this was gonna work. So I've got it locked into position higher than it would normally be, and I wanted to test it out. The gun is just under three pounds, this is just over three pounds, and it holds it in position just fine. So I think this is gonna work out well. Now the next thing to figure out is how to mount this to a plate that goes on the floor. And to do that, we're gonna mount right here and probably use a piece of angle iron that's gonna fit right here and be strapped around the torso. That way we can move it up and down to adjust for height. So let's go do some welding. So what we're gonna do here is use a piece of angle iron to come up and connect to the spine. So first, I'm just gonna cut it off at the right height. Then I'm gonna take another couple of pieces and weld them on the inside to act as spacers. So the stand will come up like this and then these will go in to connect to the spine. And that's basically so that the pants can be pulled up behind the stand. All right, I'm gonna use this horizontal bandsaw to cut this steel. Obviously, you don't even have to use steel to make a stand for this. This could be a piece of two by four. I just would like to have a piece of steel to help uh, hold the whole mannequin in place so I don't have to worry about the weight of the stuff that's on the mannequin. 
So I cut this piece to 50 inches, and that's so that it can fit right in the middle of my spine. Then there'll be an offset piece that goes here that actually connects to the spine of the mannequin, and that's so that the whole mannequin can move up and down a little bit, and we can adjust for the thickness of shoes and maybe a little height change. All right, so I'm gonna take one of these shorter pieces and set it right in there, and then just weld these together to have that offset. So the point of putting that piece on there is so that when it attaches to the spine right here, it's offset from this back piece. But right now, there's not enough of an offset, there's not a gap here, because the pants actually have to be pulled up right here. So we're gonna go back and add some more scrap pieces right here at the top until the offset is enough. I've got the stand all welded up, and for a platform for that stand to go into, I've got this big piece of butcher block. I don't know where this came from, but it's a perfect size and it's really heavy, so it should act as a pretty good base for this whole thing to stand on. Now to make a slot for that piece of steel to go into, I cut off another little scrap of the same material. I'm gonna find the center point, lay it in place, and then trace the outside of it. Now you could cut out that shape with a CNC or with a router. We're gonna use a drill. I'm gonna use a piece of tape here on the bit as a kind of rough stop to make sure that I don't drill all the way through it. It doesn't really need to be exact, but I wanna have a place so that I know how deep each one of these drill holes needs to be. To avoid tear out on these, I'm gonna use a knife just to cut the fibers and then I'll go back with a chisel to actually knock out the rest of the material. All right, so I got the hole cut out. I'm gonna to try to fit this thing in there. It's gonna be a little bit loose because I did it by hand, but we're also planning on putting in some epoxy to kind of lock it. It actually does fit in there pretty well. It may need to be a little bit deeper to drop down, and worst case, if it rocks around too much, we can just cut all the way through, drop the metal through the wood, and then weld on a plate onto the bottom of the metal, and then bolt that plate to the bottom of the wood. We'll see how it goes. Yeah, it's gonna need a plate. The stand is nice and sturdy now, it's plenty strong enough to hold this thing. So this is gonna mount right in here, and to attach those two together, we're gonna use some hose clamps. The cool thing about these is that you can get them in all different sizes, but you can also take them apart and chain them together if you need one that's really long. They're also really thin metal, so that you can bend them, and that's gonna be really good in the case of this one, where there's an angle on the back, we can bend it tightly around that back angle, but then it can wrap around the radius of the pipe on the front. Dan is mounted to the stand, and so it's time to put on the rest of the limbs, and so we've got a forearm up here and then the two legs. To attach these, we 3D printed some pieces that fit inside the PVC pipe. They mount together with a quarter 20 bolt, and then you put on a wing nut to tighten them into place. Now these don't carry any weight, so they don't really have to be strong particularly, and if you wanted them to be stronger, you could put some sandpaper in between those two pieces or model in some teeth to really lock them together. One thing you'll see here is we've got some tape wrapped around this part. That goes inside the PVC pipe. And that's because the inside diameter of the PVC is kind of inconsistent. So we added a little tape to these to make sure that each one fits snugly. Now that we've got the tape on there, we can kind of jam this in there. And it's good and strong to hold position and we tighten down the nut there you go. Now we just gotta do the legs the same way. So we just did the measurements from the floor, but without having all these pieces actually inserted into each other, we weren't sure the final lengths of the legs. Right now they're a little bit too long, so I'm just figuring out where they need to be for the leg to stand straight and still have room on the bottom for the sole of the shoe. Obviously we still have some play. We can move the torso up and down, so it doesn't have to be exact.
Depending on your costume, you're going to have to have it fit different ways on the mannequin. Certain costumes don't really need to have muscles. Certain ones do have to have certain parts of the body to rest on. Like in the case of this one, I really need to have hips and a waist for all of the stuff up here to rest on. So I'm gonna build that out with some foam. I'm gonna use some packing material from things that I've bought in the past. I always just pull that stuff out of the package before I throw it away. So I've got a bunch of pieces of foam that I can use to build out the volume of the body in different places. For this case, I need to do the hips and the waist. I also need to do the forearms, the quads, and the calves. Those are the big things for this costume. So I'm gonna start by measuring myself. It's like 40. <laughs> Man, I'm gonna need a longer measuring tape. It's, it's so he can swim. Dan's ready for aquatic training. That's right. He does work on the beach. And part of the reason we didn't glue on all these pieces is so that it can be dressed because with the arms in these weird positions, it's actually gonna be kinda hard to get all the shirts and the pants and stuff over all of these. So the more we can take apart, the better. This entire process of building out the muscles for the body is just like, I'm figuring it out as I go. I'm using whatever materials I have on hand and I'm just kind of piecing it together to match what I need for this particular costume. But it's probably not something that you can really follow along with, you know, action for action because you're gonna have a different situation. You'll probably have different materials to use and probably a different costume to try to work around. So now that I've got that fit onto the leg, I'll just go back and round off some of the corners so it doesn't look like it's made out of blocks. This may look kind of weird that I'm putting the muscles on the inside of the skeleton, but based on where the hips are, we wanted to have the hip bones. That means that the legs, or the skeleton of the leg is actually lined up with the hip bone, which it wouldn't be in a normal person. So that's why all the muscle seems to be on the inside of where the skeleton is. And it may be that this tape is actually not a great way to attach all this stuff, but we're gonna put it on with the tape for now, and then we'll come back later and kind of figure out more permanent ways to attach the muscles if they're in the right place. They may not be in the right place. So the leg piece that I'm trying to fit on here, the shin, has a taper to it. And the foam can squish down into the taper, but I'm trying to remove as much material as I can to kind of get the normal taper that your calf would have. It's just kind of weird uh, working in foam that's really squishy and trying to get the right volume but have enough in the right places, and it's just, it just takes some time. If you were to build one of these, you really need to think about how you put the armor on. And in this case, basically everything on the top side of this costume is based around the belt. The belt goes around the abdomen section, it holds on these hip plate armors. And so really, building out the mass here where the belt goes was kind of key to be able to put everything else on top of it. So even though it looks a little bit silly in its current state, this mass right here is gonna hold everything else in place, and that's where we have to start dressing it to. Gonna go ahead and move Dan into the office where he's gonna live and let him skate there. All right, it's looking pretty awesome so far, but the only thing he doesn't have yet is hands. 
We printed out some of the same pieces that went in the knees and the elbow, but they're a little bit different. Let me show you how we're gonna make the hands. In their video, Bill and Britt from Punish Props did a really awesome thing for the hands. They used a piece of Sintra as the palm and then used some armature wire to make the fingers. We're gonna do the same thing, but the only difference is Josh modeled up these pieces to fit the Sintra inside. That way we can spin the wrist. And so we're gonna go ahead and do the rest of the same construction that they did on this piece right here. So these have a captive nut on this side and then the bolts run in on that side. So I'm gonna slide this in here and then just mark with an ice pick where to drill the hole. For the fingers, we're gonna use this wire, and it's just a multi-purpose wire that I found at the store. It's nothing special. You could use specialized armature wire if you really wanted to, but I think this stuff is a good mixture between strong and flexible. Check it out, it totally works. One of the big goals of this project was to show off the costume, but it was also to be able to hold the gun in this position. And with a little bit of adjusting on all the joints, it totally holds it there. I call that a win, even though I've still got some work to do on this thing. The stand itself is complete, but the costume still has a few more things that I need to do to it. And that's gonna be a lot easier now that it's up on a stand. This costume was almost completely done on my live stream on Twitch, and we do that every single week. We'll put a link to it so you can come check it out. I'd love to know what you think about this project. Let me know down in the comments. And I've got lots of other types of project videos that you may be interested in. Check some of those out, and don't forget to subscribe. That's it for this one, guys. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Huh? Oh? Huh? He doesn't have any hams. And then you put a wing nut on there to tighten them down. Check that out. It totally works. Check. I was so excited. Hey. Hey, Dan.